Hey friends, and welcome back to my top five in five. Quick lists for your tea break fix. In this series, I give you my top five lists in five minutes or under, just about the time it takes to make a great British cup of tea. And in this episode, top five iconic Rickenbacker guitars. If there's one thing that no one else can claim but Rickenbacker, it's that they're responsible for the first ever electric guitar, the famous frying pan model made in 1931. First at number 5, Tom Petty used an enviable variety of guitars through his career but was certainly one of the most visible and downright enjoyable Rickenbacker players. Influenced by George Harrison's 12-string work on Hard Day's Night and the sound created by Roger McGuinn of the Birds, possibly Tom's first and most iconic Rickenbacker was a 360-12, 12-string electric semi-hollow in Fireglow, which for me is the most beautiful Ricky colour with its red burst look. It's also the guitar responsible for that undisputed Rickenbacker sound on songs such as Free Falling and American Girl and was later played during Tom's time with supergroup The Travelling Wilburys. In at number 4 on this list is Paul Weller's 330, which achieved true iconic status in the hands of the angry mob from Woking when the jam came to notoriety in the 70s and early 80s mod revival movement. Paul took his anger out on a collection of Rickenbacker 330 models and a bunch of finishes including Fire Glow, Jet Glow, Maple Glow, not to mention a very rare white example and his pop-up Wham! guitar daubed with Roy Lichtenstein graphic. The later 330 was also modified with a Gibson humbucker chiseled into the neck position. A devoted Lambretta straddling mod by his teens, Weller unleashed his legendary fire and skill on the 330 because his idol Pete Townsend of The Who played and ruthlessly destroyed a slew of Rickenbacker guitars in the 1960s. At number 3, possibly most iconic Rickenbacker bass is that of Motorhead frontman and fellow Jack Daniels addict Ian Fraser Lemmy Kilmister, who played them almost exclusively even since his early career in Hawkwind when he began favouring them in place of his hop studio bass. His later standard 401s gave way to various customised versions and in 1995 the company released a signature bass in the 404 LK, which was a limited run of 60 units with the majority of production models coming post-2000. Although he played many other brands including Washburn, Minaret, and Gibson, he was truly best known for his love of Rickenbackers. Influenced by the Beatles and the Birds, Pete Townsend of The Who at number two regretted smashing as it was his favourite. Honourable mentions go to Roger McGuinn of The Birds, his 12th string as featured on Tambourine Man, Susanna Hoff of The Bangles, Peter Buck of R.E.M., Johnny Marr of The Smiths, John Kay of Steppenwolf. But I'm sure you can probably list many, many more who you feel should be on this list. Please let me know in the comments down below. Some interesting facts you may not know about Rickenbacker. Number one, while it was started in 1939 by George Beauchamp and Adolf Rickenbacker, the brand was named after the most successful World War I fighter pilot, Eddie Rickenbacker. Number two, Rickenbacker amps were repaired by none other than inventor Leo Fender, whose repair shop did a lot of work for the company in the 1940s before Fender Guitars. And number three, Rickenbacker created the first mass-produced electric guitar, the A22 electric lap steel which was based off of their 1931 frying pan guitar. I had to top this list by inclusion of one of my all-time favourite bands, The Beatles, as at one time or another Rickenbacker guitars featured and influenced their sound tremendously. John Lennon loved his Black 325 and most of the early photos of him playing feature this guitar, or the copy commissioned by Rose Morris in 1964 and later sold by Ringo for over 800,000 US dollars. Paul McCartney variously played Rickenbacker 401 bass guitar in the studio but favoured his Hofner for visual impact live and in photos. George Harrison defined possibly the most legendary Ricky sound ever on the band's song Hard Day's Night. The opening chord is typical of the sound and his use of the 12 string in the guitar solo is unmistakable and led to many others on our list picking up a Rickenbacker. So there's my top list of Rickenbackers. I know you'll have plenty to add to it so as always please just give me a comment in the description down below. I love reading those and also if you have any ideas for future top five and fives that you'd like to see me cover please also let me know in the comments down below and I'll do my very best to get to them as quickly as I can. I'm quite enjoying this. I hope you're having fun with it. If as always you are give it a like and a thumbs up and it can't hurt to subscribe. I'll be back really soon with more videos. In the meantime you take good care friends.